Okay. For a while now, people uh, have been asking me what I think about Alex Jones and the whole New World Order deal. And I've been putting it off for a long time because I don't care about Alex Jones and I don't care about InfoWars. However, since I do keep getting asked about it, I'm going to go ahead and give my view of it. The belief in the New World Order conspiracy is not an unexpected reaction to everything that's been going on. Clearly, anyone who looks around at the situation the world is in, they can see a stark contrast between uh, the way the media, the education system, and official societal dogma says things are, and the way they really are. I mean, this is no secret. There's a huge contrast between what we're told and the way things actually are. When confronted with this contradiction, a rational person is going to go looking for an, for an explanation. Now, when this break with the official story occurs, a person doesn't have an immediate understanding as to why it isn't true. So a person has to go look around at the situation and compare that with any other explanation they might come across. So this idea that a secret society conspiring against everybody in the world is not an unreasonable conclusion. Anyone can see that there is a group of people out there, a wealthy, powerful collection of people, who always make out no matter what, while the vast majority always lose. Uh, that's simple, observable, empirical reality. There's not much in the way of denying this. It is not unreasonable because it's true. There is an elite strata out to control the world. You know, we call them the capitalist class. There are people who use a great deal of wealth and control over the world's resources to control governments and entire populations. However, Alex Jones won't analyze capitalism. He's one of the people who blindly believes that capitalism is the only way slash greatest thing ever and therefore can do no wrong, which is just like the Mises cultists and the Ron Paul so-called revolutionaries. So lacking any ability or desire to take a critical look at capitalism, he has to find some kind of great other. Now, there's nothing wrong with what he thinks or the economic system he believes in, so therefore there must be some great other invading this system or some kind of primal abstract great evil, which also explains why often Illuminati conspiracy theories involve statism. Now, the perception of the great other usually takes the form of something they already know about or something they already have a hatred for. The recognition of the conspiracy, you know, um, when lacking a proper materialist analysis, causes a person's consciousness to resort to any already held prejudices as the cause of it. If a person is racist, they'll see the New World Order as a Jewish conspiracy. If they're deeply religious, they'll blame Satanists. If they're very New Age hippie, they'll blame space reptiles. If they're prejudiced towards anti-capitalist ideas, they'll blame socialism and communism. All of this is caused by an inability and refusal to conduct a materialist analysis of the current system and the ideology are recognizing its contradictions. Okay, I take the claim by capitalism that it ends poverty. Poverty is eliminated by capitalism. Anyone who has any sense of reality, no matter where they live in the world, knows that this does not happen. The United States has rampant poverty. The third world is overflowing with poverty. And all these places are capitalists, from the U.S. to Afghanistan to Somalia. Now, when poverty isn't eliminated, uh, the various prejudices appear to explain without a materialist analysis. A race will say it's the Jewish conspiracy or black people don't want to work. If a person is deeply religious, then God is punishing people. An antisocial will say that's not capitalism. In truth, through a materialist analysis, we know there cannot be a rich without a poor. One group has a majority of the money, and the other section or sections have very little. It's literally impossible for poverty to be eliminated by capitalism. None of these anti-materialist explanations can actually understand this contradiction. A lack of materialist analysis always leads to blaming some great other. Take Alex Jones' uh, view of illegal Mexican immigration. He claims that corporations want the border between the U.S. and Mexico destroyed so they can fulfill this grand North notion of a North American Union. Of course, this goes against a materialist analysis. Capitalism requires a pool of cheap labor in order to extract profit. This cheap pool of labor is in Mexico, and the system needs it to stay that way. If the border was removed, eventually living standards and wages would roughly equalize across the whole area in question. This would in turn hurt profits because producers need a cheap pool of labor to produce commodities and a pool of labor that is not as poor in order to buy them, thus the border has to remain. Poverty in Mexico caused by American companies drives people across the border into the U.S. to escape it. Thus, we have a contradiction in capitalism. 
which is a system of contradictions. But Alex Jones has a typical American anti-socialist stance created by decades of Cold War propaganda and will not analyze capitalism and automatically defaults to the that's not capitalism stance. This lack of a materialist analysis of the system we live in and the ideology we live in will lead to all kinds of theories and conspiracies as to why things are not as we are told they are. So it's natural but incorrect reaction to a lack of understanding. So I really don't blame Alex Jones or the people that follow him for thinking the way that they do.